You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Chinese takeaway curry sauce that is thick, rich and robust, and you're going to be able to make this classic recipe in just a few minutes by first melting 50 grams of butter very gently in a pan on a low to medium heat, thereby creating a vector for the flavours we are about to introduce. I have prepared 500 millilitres of stock for this recipe, and I'll add around 100 millilitres of it to the butter to add a smidge more lubrication in readiness for the numerous incoming spices. Beginning with a generous teaspoon of curry powder and a generous teaspoon of turmeric, and try not to knock the camera when you add your turmeric like I did there. I tried to pull out and do it again, but I'm afraid it was already too late and the video was ruined. A quarter of a teaspoon of cumin, along with half a teaspoon of ginger powder, and crucially, three teaspoons of Chinese five spice powder. Now, salt is subjective, although I have added three quarters of a teaspoon here, along with a third of a teaspoon of pepper and an optional half a teaspoon of MSG and don't be scared of MSG it won't bite an optional half a teaspoon of chili powder if you want that signature spicy kick and a teaspoon of garlic powder if you have it but don't cry too much if you don't it'll be fine and I'm sure you'll all have two teaspoons of sugar in the cupboard so add that before stirring the whole thing up very well to dissolve the spices in our buttery flavour vector. And I like describing butter as a flavour vector because it makes me sound much more intelligent than I actually am. Some acid must be introduced at some point with a teaspoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon of white vinegar or similar, along with two tablespoons of light soy sauce. And I promise that we are almost done now with two to three cloves of minced garlic. And do you remember that stock from the beginning of the video? Well, I'm adding the rest of that in now. It's just a simple chicken stock made with stock cubes, but if you're artisanal or just anal, you can use real stock or vegetable stock if you're one of them. But either way, we need to thicken this curry with a cornstarch slurry, 50 grams of cornstarch, to which will be added 100 millilitres of cold water, and the water must be cold. Whisk it all up until it's smooth, and decant it into a more practical vessel before adding slowly to our now hot, watery curry while whisking all the time, and continuing to cook on a gentle heat and as you're whisking in the slurry you should find that the curry will thicken pretty quickly to a gloopy consistency. I've gone in quite enthusiastically with my cornstarch slurry here with 50 grams of cornstarch but you can reduce the amount of cornstarch a tad if you don't want your curry quite as thick as this texture demonstration here. If you're not eating this straight away and you're going to allow it to cool I would make it a little thicker than you think you'll need because once it's reheated it will thin out a little bit. But if you're eating it straight away, add a little water if it's too thick, just to loosen it up a little. And after I've added that water, the difference in texture may be almost imperceptible on my outdated camera, but it is very much perceptible in real life, I can assure you. And as a final flourish, I can definitely recommend adding a tablespoon of sesame oil to finish. Take a taste test and adjust the seasoning as required before enjoying this authentic curry sauce anywhere you can think of. I'm having it here with salt and pepper triple cooked chips, link above and in the description. But throw anything in it or at it and you won't regret it. The only thing you will regret is not making it. I'll see you next time, eh? Ta-da!